Hi everyone, this is Rick Morgan. I am uh, your favorite, com well, maybe I'm one of, one of your favorite comic book scientists, I, I would hope. Uh, well, at least I hope I'm in the discussion, right, when you're arguing about it. So uh, anyway, happy birthday to America. It is July 4th, and this is the first one I've actually been in America for for a while, so I'm happy to be here. This time last year I was in, um, I was in Scotland freezing to death. It actually snowed on the 4th of July for me last year. It was pretty cold and, and, and uh, bitter. Maybe I'll show a photo of that, uh, what that looked like here uh, over my shoulder in a moment. And additionally, I will um, talk to you a little bit about some things I've been up to and, I'll, and, um, some, and some missives from some of our, our friends, our viewers. And I'll also show you, um, like for example, this Conan book that I removed some Sharpie pen from, you know, what it can look like. And, you know, here's, here's a few pictures of that. I'll let that sit for a moment. And I'll also show you um, how much I can, how you can take ink from a Silver Age book, like a Sharpie pen. It's not easy and it takes a long time. And I mean, the basic trick, if you don't watch this video and you're not really into watching me, you know, look at comic books for half an hour is, you know, you put cleaner on it and the cleaner is, you start with, you go progressively more polar cleaners. I start with like water or water and surfactant. And this time I just took regular ImmacuClean because I know what's in it and it worked pretty well. So I didn't have to step up my game much from there. And I just got the paper wet and you kind of usually go from both sides. You know, you put like some, uh, I put, sometimes I put some, uh, a microfiber cloth or something underneath it that's absorbent. I didn't have to in this case, because most of the ink was on the OD, on the outer diameter of the book. So I get that wet and then you just absorb and you press it up. I don't rub it much at all or if any, because remember uh, wet paper is weak paper and we don't rub wet paper. And we are very cautious to not remove you know, ink we don't want to remove. So you can see that I got most of the red ink off this book, but you know, not all of it, but it's an FF48, which is the first appearance of Silver Surfer and first appearance of weird looking, weird Galactus. He has weird colors in his his costume. But um, anyway, uh, happy birthday, America, and I'll see you guys around. Now, this one's not going to be all that interesting because it's just there's before and afters, but our old pal Stephen Nathan, there's some examples of what you can do. Uh, he's got a couple books here, Weapon X 72. And the important thing to note here is how glossy this cover looks after he's cleaned it and pressed it. And look how glossy. And look how beautiful his square corners. This guy is really good, though. I mean, these guys are, <laughs> there's a couple guys, they're both named Steven. I think be better than me pretty soon. Um, you know, I've got a lot of competition here. And I mean, this is a, I mean, this guy is, I don't know what this book looked like before, but, it, you know, He's cleaned it up well. It looks really, really good. And I, um, you know, I don't want to spend too much time on it, but to show, oh, this is the back cover of the same book, sorry, I believe. So you can see there's a little bit of a spine tick there still in this book, so it's probably a yeah, bindery tear. Oh, and oh, there's a, it's probably a 9.6, 9.4, but looks pretty good. I mean, this is some good work right here. And let me scoot up a little and I'll show you what else I have going on. We have, um, I have, let's see what we have. We got a uh, guy here wants me to take a look at an Avengers. This is Steven, uh, this is, I'm sorry, this is not Steven. This is uh, uh, Steven, yeah, sorry, Steven. There's so many Stevens. <laughs> so he has, he's looking at, a, and I hope you're watching Steven. He's got Avengers number eight. And I'm pretty sure he wants this removed. And I haven't, uh, I will respond to him soon more about this. But if you're watching this, Stephen, yeah, we can take that off. That's not going to be a problem, actually. Obviously, the book's very brittle. You can see it across the top. This is probably looking at like a 1.8, 2.0. So there's not much harm we can do by trying on this particular one. Um, we can clean it up and make it look prettier. I might remove this cover and then and then mend that cover and then replace it because it's clearly going to fall off the book uh, pretty soon. I might recommend that. But yeah, we can, this book's got a lot of room to grow. Um, we've got some feedback from another friend here, and it is uh, Edward Dalmas. He, so so he, he, uh, he emailed me and said, hey man, and this is something I want to really want to show to more people. So he said, hey, he's interested in, he said, look, I got all these streaks here. And you know, my and I always say, look, these streaks are largely paper fines and residue that dry from the soap. You can try diluting it more, which means you're cleaning it less. You just have to do it in more steps, and you won't have as many of these streaks and fines. I don't know if you guys can see the streaks right here, but I said, look, 
I suggested, hey, go perpendicular to the streaks with DI water and a pad, or I prefer a microfiber cloth. And he did it, and it came out just fine. It looks better, great for him. Um, so, you know, that's pretty good. And he's also, he wanted to ask me some questions about removing some uh, stains and some, some ink here. So he's got a water stain in here, right? Water stains almost universally have to be rinsed uh, from the book, which means you have to remove the cover, put it on a rinsing board with uh, like a silk screen underneath it, and you rinse it with uh, some surfactants and either water or uh, toluene or pet ether, depending on what, what it is you know, what the stains are made out of, and you have to rinse it and then dry it, because the stain just keeps growing. If you try to get it off here, you just end up pushing more material out to the other side. It's So you pretty much almost always want to do that with a, with a uh, slant board and a rinsing board and a pump and a spray nozzle, and it, it comes off pretty good if you do that, but, um, you know, it's almost always necessary. And, um, and I'm gonna, he wants to talk about how to clean this, and so I'm gonna just give him some tips himself, but also here, here's this, these, these, copy books here i'm almost certain we can get that out the oranges are tough sometimes but um a lot of these rubber stamp inks are water-based and they come off pretty easily uh there may, there's a chance that we could we might lose a little bit of the orange underneath it but again if you've already got ink on a book and you're limited to like 4.0 max because there's ink on it you're really not going anywhere south by removing a little bit of the cover ink at the same time so you may as well try because it might get better. It's probably not going to get worse. And um, and foxing, he's got some. Fo this is definitely foxing, uh, Sam. One, there's no, there's no doubt about it. And usually, with foxing, if it's iron based, you use a chelating agent to remove the iron, uh, and usually the the rest of it will follow. Um, and so that that's what happens. You can get that. If it's not, if it's mold based, you have to kill it in an ozone chamber and then use putty like absorine or, um, you know, just even silly putty probably work if it's not colored to just remove their, their bodies from it. So that's what I do. And, um, you know, but if it's on this colored areas, it's a little harder because you don't want to use the putty to remove it. Um, but, um, and, you know, and if you've got little, little guys like this, you have some, some, pressing issues here, some lines on it. So I'll talk to Edward later about this, but if Edward, if this video covers those questions for you, then um, you know we don't have to go over that. And that is about it for what's coming up here in the future. Oh, another one, Buck Farmer. Buck, if you are seeing this video, you've got some, uh, he asked about color touch removal, and there looks like he's got some color touch, which you can do. And obviously this needs to be cleaned as well, besides that. And he's got some Bic Pen on an FF number, I think 12, he said. So Bic Pen's tough. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Uh, getting those things off of there is a challenge uh, with the, the old, the 60s Bic Pens especially. Uh, they were usually solvent based and they're harder to get off, but uh, it can be done. So anyway, those are some things that we're up to and I wanted to share it with you and uh, onto our videos next. I want to stop and review just a couple more uh, emails that I got to see, get some input from our, our community of learners here. Um, so Ed Sherman, hey, Ed said, hey, you know, Rick, could you please make a magazine size and golden age size chamfer pressing boards? I really recently purchased two of your silver age chamfer boards, found that they are too small for 10 and 12 cent Dells. I also have many magazines I want to press as well and need larger chamfer pressing boards. Your attention to this matter would be most welcome. Your chamfer pressing boards are a godsend. Thank you. Uh, I often find that many spine ticks are eliminated with just a common press when using them. Sure. Um, if you, if anybody else wants them in larger size, let me know. I usually buy like a, it, the sheets are usually four foot by eight foot or four foot by 10 foot of SPS stock. And then I have a bleached and cut and then I have to soak them in salt water and then I have to reform them and then sand them in all this stuff. And so um, it's only really worth it if I can sell like I think a minimum of a hundred of them is the first time I break even on it. So. Um, let me know if that's something you want and I'll start making larger boards for more people. Um, so I'll do that. And also I should mention, by the way, I haven't really mentioned this a lot, but when I make them, I have to throw away about half of them. They don't all come out good. So a lot of them end up going in the recycle bin because the process is just, it's so difficult as you've probably no doubt many of you have said, there's no way I'm paying for this chamfer board. I'm going to make my own. 
and then you tried making it, I'm guessing, and then you found it it's way harder than you thought and you just bought one. So try that, see what you think. Um, also, Buck Farmer, who I'm loving this guy more and more as I learn to talk to him, he he gave me some examples of some some books that he talked, he asked me some questions about. Um, I don't know Buck well enough to get you know his immediate permission to, to share any photos he sends with me, but he's got a couple books. One has a, uh, it has a color touch. He says, hey, there's some color touch on a book, and they notice that it's usually almost always at spine ticks, it's almost always filled in with a Sharpie pen on a dark area or, you know, a colored pen of some sort. And according, Orver Street almost always says crayon, pencil, or chalk. Because like, they don't know what the hell it is. They don't even bother looking. They just say, oh, it's there's color touch. So can you remove it? Yeah. Get this. Most Sharpie pen will dissolve a lot of the ink underneath it if it's solvent-based. So if it's written on something, you remove that ink, you're removing some of the ink below it too, almost universally, and always the color gloss. So what do you do with it? That's a that's a tricky one. Usually I rub different solvents on a, uh, you know, a pad, and then I will um, put or, or a tiny, tiny uh, needle, like a hypodermic needle, onto a tiny pad, and then make a little line right on it and let it soak, and then dab it off and lift it. Um, sometimes this stuff's like doing it with a microscope. I mean, I have a little microscope I work with sometimes just to get that little tiny thing off of there. You can get it, and you don't have to get all of it. If you just remove most of it, honestly, if, if CGC sees a spine tick, they're not looking for color touch around. Them. They're not looking for color touch uh, right next to it. They just call it a spine tick at that point. So you can get most of it off. Um, he also had some... Um, FF, uh, old FF book with some big pen on the writing. It's like, hey, can I get this off the cover? And it's hard. 60s big pen is tough. Um, you can do it. You can, um, a lot of times it's better if you have a laser cutter, you make a mask, like you scan the book and you can actually draw out the, um, the ink, you know, where the ink, wherever the ink is on there. Cause it's, and then you can laser cut a piece of vinyl sheet and make a mask. And then you can like clean it off with, you know, um, uh, toluene and some, uh, surfactants to lift that up. Uh, it's always it's always a risk, and a lot of times it's not worth taking off because a lot of times it doesn't take a hit on the grade at 4.0 and below for like a you know a good uh, fine you know uh, for like a sorry sorry very good and below it doesn't there's really there's really no benefit. It doesn't go up in grade for removing the ink at that point. Only at like a higher grade does it do that typically. Um, so. That those are some. That's some advice for that, you know. And and you know, I will say that Buck also said that he uh, he had um, he he wrote, "Hey Rick, hope you get your advice on a couple of matters. Hope this message find you and yours well. I've done a couple of wet cleanings. Uh, definitely overdid one, which is super common. Uh, it's way cleaner, sans dirt and ink." He says, "Well, that's the trick, man. Like like it's like I sweat it out for a long time whether to even make this stuff publicly available because I'm pretty sure people are gonna ruin some comic books." And I've made it the least likely to dissolve ink as possible, but um, you still got to be careful. Dilute it more, use less. Do not rub. You know, wipe very lightly, and you know, color test some areas first, um, because it's just going to happen. Is it an overall benefit? Yes, I think it's overall a benefit to most books, but there are going to be issues. It's just a risk we have to take. Uh, but he'll get better. Everybody gets better, and it's not like there's any lack of books to. Um, to clean out in the world. And I'm going to do something soon in the future. I'm thinking about doing the fall. Tell me if you guys like this. I've got so many books that I've meant to clean over the years. I've got like all this, like this huge stacks of Eternals and Hulk and I guess lots of Hulk. And so, you know, I guess this is mostly a big pile of Eternals and She-Hulk and, uh, not She-Hulk, uh, Red Sonya, She-Hulk. <laughs> I think, I guess it's the angry face and the big boobs that get me. Um, so it's a, uh, you know, I've got so many. I'm thinking about putting these in packs that say, hey, here's a bunch of books. This needs a press. This needs this. This needs that of about the same era. And say, here's a bunch of books that you can cut your teeth on and learn from here. And then shipping those out at, you know, at a profit for fun and profit. So not dollar books, but books that you can clean up. And they're worth they're worth cleaning and improving and selling, right? So not just junk. Right? So, uh, you know, I have so many and thousands of them. I'm thinking about like this here. Hold on. Can you get that black pen off of there? That's a maybe that's a, a associate's degree, <laughs> right? Comic book cleaning, or a, that's a uh, maybe that's the Barbazol 
like the uh, hair uh, the cutting school or the cosmetic school degree, whatever we're gonna call ourselves here for giving out uh, certifications for cleaning. This is just a clean and press. There's just dirt and schmooks on the back of it. So that's your standard, right? That's your $10, but this is, check it out, boxing galore. Definitely, oh, obviously I've been doing experiments on this one, but this has got a ton of uh, foxing to remove. So there's a foxing test there, right? You wanna do, you want some foxing samples? This is uh, sh sun shadow, dull. This, Book needs to be rinsed. This is um, General Kaka. This is uh, Wonder Woman with ink transfer from another book. In the back of it, this is, I don't know, just junk. Um, this is super, oh, ink transfer red. On the back, red on yellow, so good luck. That sucker. Anyway, yeah, you get the idea. I'm thinking about, you know, more valuable books to get people to cut their teeth, and I'll just send them out because I sure as heck ain't never going to clean them. So, might as well let you guys do it. Um, anyway, enough of me babbling about nothing. I'll get on to the point of the whole video. I'm sure to get some thumbs downs for this stuff now, but uh, uh, take care. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. All right, so we have a favorite. This is FF48, Kirby and um, Lee Classic, of course. This is a nice book. Yeah, Stan Lee, Jack Kirby. Coming of Galactus. You know, and uh, of course, this is right about the time the Silver Surfer shows up, and we get Black Panther in a few issues as well. So Silver Surfer is in here as well. This one, uh, this one smells kind of funny. I'll have to fix that, and uh, it has kind of a weird paint paint type of solvent smell. Um, we've got some coloring back here that we'll remove. Stains on these interior pages. Um, some schmutz here. If you look, you can see it. There's some dirt. And we have, let's see, for markings on the front. This is probably around 3.5, 4.0. Um, a few marks. And then I think there's a coupon missing. From this book on the ID, here it is. Strange little spot to have a coupon missing but there's one missing looks like one of the mary marvel marching society ones i believe so someone was very careful to get it out of there so uh but it's gone so we are gonna we're gonna fix it we'll see how it goes Let's see how we're doing we're gonna start with just a q-tip here and see where you got some of that material off and we're just gonna use the immaculate clean as a See if we can just wipe some of this off of here. And we're just gonna try to get it off like this. It's gonna take a long time and a lot of Q-tips, but I think we'll, we'll do the best we can, right? We're gonna try to dab and not try to rub it. We don't wanna rub a bigger circle out of it. I think, but eventually, using this method, you see this, we will get a lot of it to come up. It probably won't be gone entirely. But again, we're not rubbing, we're just pressing and lifting from the surface here. And, um, you know, it, it may be easy just to get the first little bit of it, but then it might give us a little, a little grief later. So we're just gonna press and lift and you'll see a little shape of it. And we might have to do this, you know, several hundred times. And as it cools, we'll have to put it back and get it warm again. And we're just gonna keep doing this. And then we will see how it goes. Oh, you little stinker. Okay. Yep, it's going to come up, but it is going to be a long, slow process. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, pretty sure my battery will die a long time before this guy's ready to come up. So it needs to be warmed up again. We're going to do that. So I'm going to put this. I put a little board to support it so it'll transport it and bend it on accident. I'm going to get that there and we're just going to get another pad, a little more Mackie clean. And we're just going to do some more. I'll warm it up without drying it out. Make sure that it's not sticking to the top. Take this out of here. 
and then we just do more. And it will keep coming up, of course less so because we get the easy parts first naturally. And then there we go, see it's coming up a little at a time. And that's basically it. I mean, you can watch me do this for four hours and see how you like it. But that's that's the way, that's how we do it. Okay, so we cleaned that, it took us a few hours, and then we, um, or I, heat pressed it here overnight. It's now four in the morning, following day. See how it looks here. Well, there's the front, which, you know, it's pretty good. Let me see this here. Make sure we have everything we need out of the way. Oh, yep, yeah, looks good there. Back, well, you know, we didn't get all of it out. You know, sometimes it's just hard to do. So you can see here that we have, you can still see the 88 pretty well, really. But overall, does it look better? Yeah, but you know, you can still, you can still tell. Obviously, I mean, it's, it's honestly, it's pretty bad. I guess some, you win some, you lose some. I can't really like, it's, eh, you can, I mean, it's pretty bad, but we don't, we can't win them all. That's all I can say here in this case. This one looks better, but not perfect. It is, it is pretty good. Um, so anyway, that's, I'll just remove these guys here, and uh, that's this particular book. So, you know, it's, they're not, I mean, if I go back at it and I play with this more, will that come out of there? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, I gave it a lot of time, so. Uh, it's just uh, one of those things where it just isn't going to improve past this point. That just happens sometimes. Oh well. It's not perfect, but it's better. First Silver Surfer, first Galactus. You know, if you want to see, first Galactus is going to be last. I think he's in the last panel of this. This particular book. Let's see here. And the cameo. There he And he has the weird, that's right, he has the weird coloring. That's where. So, uh, there you go. That's it. That's our boy.